sometimes you do not like big catapult shots because for some reason it took a, a little while to get their scan going as they left the deck. And some of the earlier airplanes like I was flying, you had to take the nose once you were airborne and physically raise it with your stick about seven and a half degrees so you weren't descending toward the water. Uh-huh. And guess what? We're only 50 feet out of the water. And they'd, they'd be pretty close by the time they got it going again and pull that nose up and get out of there. So they didn't like it. But I didn't have any trouble. I didn't see everything until the last second, even then I could see. So I'm going to show you some uh, photographs and a diagram right there of the catapult. And I'll start off with this first one which shows a, a launch on two different catapults, Cat 1, Cat 2, and the people involved. Here's another aircraft ready to go on. We have two blast deflectors. The colored shirts all, as you know, have a job. And the, the green people are going to be on here with our catapult crew members. One of them is actually going to be the one pushing the button to fire the catapult. And the catapult officer tells him to. It'll be one of these two people standing over here in the port cap block. Uh, red shirts are ordnance men. They will have loaded the bombs, rockets, missiles, guns, and they will pull the pins before the aircraft is launched to make sure they can launch their ordnance. Right now on deck, you're going to have safety pins in there so if something doesn't accidentally get launched. Uh, white shirts are going to be safety members, that'll be like uh, safety crew or corpsman or one of those people will be the final checker from a squadron to do the final check walk around in the airplane to make sure everything is ready to go. Yellow shirts are directors and one of them will be the catapult officer. Catapult officers are nicknamed shooters because they're going to shoot the catapult. And the catapult officers are all either Navy pilots or Navy flight officers. They have flown on off a carrier, and now it's their turn to be on the carrier. That way, they know how important it is to get a good capture. We don't want any cold cats. Cold cat means you didn't get enough power in the catapult to get the airplane flying by the end of the track. 250 feet long, you get flying. <coughs> the glass deflectors are used to deflect the hot exhaust and that very high speed air that's coming out of the exhaust up at about a 65 degree angle from the horizontal bank up in the air. That way we can park another aircraft that behind here without any fear of getting the engine uh, exhaust from this airplane into that one. That happened to me a couple of times in Vietnam with a Phantom. When you start getting hot air in your intake, it automatically would start building up the revolutions per minute on my airplane because it knew the engine was, my engine was getting too hot and it didn't want that to happen. I had no control over it. The only thing you do is tell him, hey boss, get this guy's exhaust off of me. I'm over temping. Hurry up to his directors and get that airplane away from me. All right, so here is a diagram of the catapult with an A7 like we have sitting right behind me on the catapult. And here he is hooked up right there and there. This is the nose tube bar. This is the whole back fitting. Thing, not on the aircraft right now, but I'm going to pick it up and show it to you. Except it's not a real one, it's a, and even then, <laughs> yeah. So, this is the thing that's going to hold you on the deck so you can check your engine. It's got this fitting right here called a dog bone. This is what it looks like. It fits right in there from this side, and this has to break before I launch, and it's going to break at a normal tensile strength. But it will allow me for the first time today to go to full engine power. Before that, if I went to full engine power just sitting on the deck here, if there's people behind me, it's going to blow them off the deck or you know what? And it will also have very hot exhaust going down the deck. And not only that, even with full brakes on, you still may be moving because this non-skid isn't always there like we have. This is beautiful non-skid right now. Vietnam, a lot of times we operate six days straight without a break, and then non-skid in certain areas would disappear. If you're butt there and you go to full power, that airplane's going to be moving, whether you or not. So we want to be able to hook up solidly to the deck with this, because this part moves in the airplane, but this part drops into a cleat in the deck. It drop into where that steel plate is, right below my speaker. And this will allow you to go to full power. 
So this is not a real one, it's just a demonstration. Now, so that's this baby right here. This nose to bar when you first come up to the cat, it's going to be up at about a 45 degree angle and only on signal does it get lower. This is actually part of the nose landing gear. When I retract the landing gear, it goes up into the nose well, right there. When I lower the gear, it won't be down like that. It will be up at about a 45 degree angle so it doesn't catch the arresting gear. Now, what's actually going to power this cabinet? Steam at 600 pounds per inch piped up from our fireworks. It will start off at some heat of steam at 850 degrees. When it gets up here, it's all cooled all the way down to 486 degrees and it will be wet steam. Six hundred pounds per square inch is the thing that fires the airplane off the cap. So think of this: two 18-inch pistons right here, side by side. Here's a cross section looking at it from the bow back toward the stern. There's one piston. There's the other. They are cross connected right here, and they are attached to the shovel, which is sticking up out of the deck here. So these pistons are forward of me and 18 inches in diameter. So think of it as double barrel shotgun, 18 inches in diameter. Instead of gunpowder, we're gonna power it with 600 pounds of steam. The steam is just waiting to be fired in it behind the pistons, and it's so powerful, it's gonna take this whole back fitting, which started off looking like that, dog bone, and it's gonna look like this at the end. Half going down the track with the airplane, half staying on the deck. So just pull it out of that little device there and throw it over the side. And the next airplane had to have a brand new one of these. These were color coded. You can see this one was originally white, but they were different shape for different airplanes and color coded. So we didn't put the wrong one in. So that's installed right here at the front, right between the nose landing gear wheels. So here's your pistons, here's your shuttle above the deck, here's the steam waiting to be released. Now you got to think about it. We've got this great big old piston with a tapered spear on it. How are we going to stop it? Because if this airplane's doing 170 to fly, this is going to be doing 170. How are we going to stop it? Well, we put a water break system in up there. Here is a round cylinder of water, and this spear is going to go charging in there at 170 miles an hour, let's say. It's going to squeeze that water out through some very small openings, and then the further it goes in there, because it's tapered, the more force it's going to exert to stop the spear. And it's going to stop this baby, these pistons, in five feet.